think that's right, I don't know. Hey everyone, it's me, Lauren, from Hot For Food. And I've got a recipe for you today that's super tasty, super fun. It's actually from my recent travels to Greece. I went to Greece for the very first time back at the end of March, early April with The Getaway Co. If you don't already know, I host curated vegan trips around the world with a company called The Getaway Co. And they're amazing. I've gone to Bali, Portugal, Italy, Greece. Next year, I'm going to Morocco. We'll announce it soon so you can book your spot if you're interested. Everything is taken care of for you. It's a full itinerary. We eat vegan, we explore together, you make new friends. It's so much fun. Every trip is so memorable. So to celebrate my travels, I actually released the travel issue of my Eat It by Hot For Food membership. So there's more recipes from all of these trips actually included in this travel issue recipe bundle. Basically, I release four times a year, like an issue or a recipe bundle of content. I started putting vlogs in there. So it's a lot of exclusive stuff you won't find anywhere else. In fact, all of it is stuff you won't find anywhere else. But to kind of promote that, if you wanna sign up for the membership, you get a 14 day free trial. You get access to everything. If you're an annual member, there's giveaways, member discounts. You get added to my close friends on Instagram and we do live cook-alongs four times a year that are super fun. Usually I do like live recipe. So check that out. And we're gonna make these Greek tomato fritters or Santorini style tomato fritters. I'm gonna botch the name if I try to say it in Greek, but the phonetic pronunciation I'm looking online, it's domatokefteris. I tried listening to it a bunch of times, but I feel like I'm might still be getting it wrong. Who cares? They're delicious no matter what you call them. And we ate a ton of these on this Greece trip, fell in love, something so simple, very few ingredients, but just so fresh. And I feel like I kind of accomplished the freshness factor. Now granted the tomatoes that grow on the island of Santorini are particularly special and sweet because of the soil there. And if you ever wanna go on the Greek trip with the Getaway Co, I won't necessarily be hosting it, but other vegan influencers will be. So go check out the website, thegetawayco.com. Maybe you've been to Greece or Santorini and you've experienced these before. I also made a little dipping sauce just so you could use up some of the extra fresh herbs that you're purchasing for this recipe. You know me, I always love a sauce. But in Santorini, we didn't eat them with anything. They were just part of our sort of like family style meals where we would have all different things like Greek salad, the fritters. We usually have some kind of stewed fava, like fava beans or split peas um, and a bunch of things. But anyway, I wanna show you how to make these. They're super simple, great to use up those end of summer tomatoes. So let's do it. I used Roma tomatoes. Now, of course, these are not as sweet as the ones you get in Santorini. You could also maybe use a mix of Roma and grape tomatoes, but I just got Romas. Also, you could just use whatever ones you're growing in your garden. I think the same process is gonna apply here. So you're gonna chop these up into cubes, like, you know, a pretty fine dice. And once you get those chopped up, put them into a colander, sprinkle a little bit of sea salt on them, and then just put that in the sink for about 20, 25 minutes. Some of the liquid's gonna drain out, but you haven't de-seeded the tomato. Keep all the seeds and all that intact, because you do need some of the moisture to absorb the flour for the batter. Meanwhile, you can chop up red onion, as well as the fresh herbs. I'm using fresh basil and fresh oregano. The fresh herbs make a huge difference in this recipe. I don't recommend using dried ones. You could even throw in dill or mint if you have all of this growing in your garden, but I had to purchase it from the store. So I thought basil and oregano would be the right tastes. We're gonna add cinnamon. This is also an important flavor to the tomato fritters. Sea salt, ground pepper, and also a little bit of sugar, again, just to sweeten them up since these Romas are not sweet. If you have really sweet ripe garden tomatoes, you don't need to add the sugar. Then add your tomatoes after the 20, 25 minutes of them draining in the sink. I tossed them a little bit to get the excess water to come up, but I didn't like squeeze them dry or anything like that. Now mix this all together. Then you're gonna add one cup of all-purpose flour. And I ended up adding the baking powder right before I fried, but I think you could add it in here because you're only letting this mixture refrigerate for about 45 minutes so it doesn't matter it's not going to deactivate the baking powder so flour and baking powder here if you want mix this all together until you don't see any dry flour in the bowl and then cover it or not put it in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour and here I added my baking powder at the end whatever I just mixed it in it was fine While the mixture's refrigerating, you can make the herby vegan yogurt dip I'm adding chopped basil and chopped oregano as well as one green onion, very finely chopped. I'm just using plain unsweetened yogurt from Trader Joe's. It's a coconut cashew one that I really like. 
a little bit of lemon zest, just about a quarter teaspoon, and salt and pepper to taste. This is best made a day in advance as well. However, I made mine and let it sit in the fridge for a couple hours and it still was very flavorful. But as always, flavors are best usually overnight. This is something super easy you can whip up the day before you're gonna make these anyways. It'll just bring out so much more of the herbs. Now you're gonna add neutral vegetable oil to a cast iron pan or a large skillet. You need about one quarter inch of oil. We're gonna do a shallow fry here. My gas stove was on a medium to high heat. I don't know the exact exact temperature that the oil was at because I didn't check. But once the oil is hot, then you're gonna wanna portion fritters with your hands or a spoon. You can go anywhere from like two tablespoons to a quarter cup. I'm saying this makes 10 fritters. Again, it will depend on your size. You may get eight to 10. Just dollop them in, don't press them or anything. And you're gonna fry them on the first side for about four minutes until really golden brown and crispy. And then gently just flip them. And it's about another four minutes on the other side. Lift them out with a slotted spoon or a spatula and put them on a paper towel lined uh, wire rack over a baking sheet or a plate or something. And just keep frying these in batches. I could fit about four in the pan at a time. And there you have them. You wanna eat them while they're kind of warm still, so plate them up, add the dipping sauce to a bowl. And here they are. Let's dive in. What's the other Greek recipe? The Greek recipe on the uh, membership is a seven layer Greek dip, which includes all the flavors I had in Greece, all into one layer dip. It's amazing. I also made Greek potatoes, like lemony Greek potatoes. So if you want those recipes, they're a part of my member blog only. Mmm. So good. Everybody on our trip was obsessed with these and everyone was like, we have to figure out how to make them at home. So I did it for y'all. You get more of this dip. I mean, this dip would be good for all kinds of things. Mm. This recipe will be on my free blog, hotforfoodblog.com, of course, where the archives of all my recipes are. A lot of the food we ate in Greece was just simple and fresh and it was really great and it was stuff that I hadn't eaten ever or that I don't think to make at home for some reason because we kind of just, even me, get stuck in certain habits of buying the same foods, making the same things. So my eyes were definitely opened up to new cuisine by going to Greece. Click the link in the description for the recipe, of course. My membership info is down there as well. Click over to that blog. And one other thing, I have bundled the Hot For Food eBooks together for you. If you don't have these yet, some of them were special gifts with purchase if you purchased my cookbooks in 2018 and 2021, so you may have these already. There's also a holiday ebook called Hot for Holidays and an exclusive ebook that I've only ever sold in this other vegan bundle promotion, but I'm selling it in this bundle of my own books called Nothing But Nudes. There's also Just Dessert Stuff and even more vegan comfort classics. So that link is below too. 28 bucks for the whole bundle. Gives you a bunch of brand new exclusive recipes from me as well. So lots of stuff. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram, of course. I'm everywhere. So I hope you subscribe, like, comment below. If you make these tomato fritters, these Santorini tomato fritters, do let me know. Everyone's been posting tomato recipes lately and I have to say I'm a fan. I think there's even something called tomato talk going on on TikTok, so these are perfect for that. I would love to see your pictures. Always tag me at hot for food and I'll be back again soon with another recipe. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.